This video tutorial is provided by the College of Graduate Studies at UCF. In this video, I will review the use of page breaks and demonstrate how to insert them throughout your document. There are two types of breaks, page breaks and section breaks. Section breaks are used to split a document into separate sections without carrying over any formatting from one section to the next. Page breaks simply start a new page while retaining all formatting from the previous page. We will use section breaks when inserting page numbers throughout the document, which will be covered in a later video. This video will focus on page breaks to ensure that each chapter starts on a new page. Because the sample document does not have any content, I will insert placeholder headings so that I can demonstrate how to separate the sections of my document. I am creating a skeleton of my document beginning with the title page, then moving through the rest of the sections. If you have already started writing, you may want to go through the document, delete any extra spaces that you added to get to a new page, and insert a page break at the end of each section. First, I'll turn on the Show Hide feature through the button in the Home ribbon. This shows any formatting already in place. You can see the appearance of many paragraph marks which display each time I've pressed the Enter key to insert a hard return. A hard return marks a new paragraph beginning on the next line. You can see that I've used a couple of hard returns to bump my content to the next page. However, if I insert any content above these marks, it will bump the content to the next line, creating extra space between the top of the next page and my heading. We recommend using page breaks to avoid the extra space that hard returns can cause as they shift content throughout your entire document. So, I will go through my document and delete the extra hard returns. Because I do not have any content in my document, I'm going to create section or chapter placeholders. If you already have a document set up with content, you can place these at the end of each chapter or section. Because I choose to include a copyright page, I will use the hard return to manually move the content down to the center of the second page. Then I will insert a copyright symbol and type my information. However, I want to contain the manual spacing to this page only, so after my copyright, I'm going to insert a page break. To insert a page break, go to the Page Layout tab of the ribbon. In the Page Setup section, click the button for Breaks. The first three options are Page Breaks, and the last four options are Section Breaks. To start a new page for my next heading, I'll use the first Page Break option. This marks the start of a new page. You can also quickly enter a page break by simultaneously hitting the Control and Enter keys. When I insert the page break, Word will move me to the new page so I can begin writing. Here I will type the heading for my abstract in all caps. When I scroll up to the previous page, you can see how the page break follows my text. If I place my cursor above the page break and type a couple more lines of content, you can see that the page break will move down the page, but when I scroll to the next page, my heading has remained in place at the top of the page. This will be particularly useful when it comes to writing your chapters and inserting figures or tables so that they can stay on one page. After my abstract heading, I'll create a couple of spaces so that when I come back to write my abstract text, I have a place to set my cursor between the heading and the page break. 
Then I'll insert the same page break again. It is best to try to keep the page break on its own line because when a page break is abutted against the end of text, it can become hidden and hard to find if it needs to be deleted. The next page can be a place for a dedication if you decide to include one. This page is entirely optional. I'm including it just to demonstrate what it will look like. Because I'm using a placeholder for the dedication page, I'm going to bump it down to the center of the page and also center it horizontally on the page. I'll type in some placeholder text. Then I'll use a hard return to create a bit of space in case I want to come back and add to my dedication later. Then I'll insert another page break. This will be the Acknowledgements page, and again I'll type the heading in all caps. I'll insert space for later body content and add another page break. Then I'll do the same for the table of contents, and again for my first chapter. You'll continue in this manner for however many chapters you plan on including plus any appendices and references. If you are not planning on including a list of figures or a list of tables, but later find that you want to include some in your document, it's very simple to insert new sections with the page break as well. Because the list of figures follows the table of contents, I'm going to scroll back up to the table of contents page. I'll place my cursor in line with the hard return between the heading and the page break. I'll add one more return and insert another page break. Here I'll type my list of figures heading. Page breaks can be extremely useful for keeping sections of your document separate, but extra page breaks can cause blank pages to appear throughout your document. If you find any extra pages, you can turn on the Show Hide All Formatting button to locate the page break and delete it just as you would any other element in your document. This concludes the video tutorial for page breaks. If you have any further questions, please use the Format Help section of the Thesis and Dissertation Services site. You may also refer to the PDF instruction file, <coughs> Margin, Spacing, and Page Breaks. For more video tutorials, please return to the Graduate Thesis and Dissertation web course.